Uh, dear participants, once again, I welcome you all for the final day of our FTP. And uh, we have with us today, uh, Dr. Shanmuga Sundaram Sakti Vail, uh, who is going to deal with one of the most important topics of this FTP, which is on solar materials. So <clears throat> if India has to be self-sufficient, do well in the future when it comes to energy uh, needs, uh, solar materials will go a long way in helping us do so. So uh, a very important topic, a distinguished guest with us. Dr. Shanmuga Sundaram Sakti Vail is actually the center head and scientist grade F for the center of, uh, and he works for the Center for Solar Energy Materials exclusively. And the, he is the uh, center, he's the head for International Advanced Research Center for Powder Metallurgy and New Materials. You know, I will call that as ARCI from now on. Uh, and it is uh, located in Hyderabad. So going through the credentials of uh, Dr. Sakti Vail, it is quite a, I mean, uh, uh, you will have to just listen uh, to the various, uh, you know, the credentials of uh, Dr. Shakti Vail. He has done his BSc in chemistry, general chemistry from St. Joseph's College, Bharati Dasan University, Tiruchirappalli, Tamil Nadu, and uh, MSc in applied chemistry, Anna University, Chennai, PhD in heterogeneous photocatalysis, Department of Chemistry, Anna University, Chennai. Uh, and also, of course, and, and uh, along with that, he has also worked there in Technical University of Klosthal, Germany, under the DART Fellowship in uh, uh, between May 1999 to September 2001. So his uh, research interests uh, lie in the following areas. Material chemistry, which is nothing but solar observer, absorber, nanostructure, porous and non-porous materials, functional coatings, uh, selective absorber, anti-reflective, and so on, photocatalysis, and smart materials. These are his major research interests. So, uh, to as I said, he is uh, the center. is the head of Center for Solar Materials at the at present. But in, uh, uh, pro, uh, formerly, he has also held many designations. I'll read out a few of them. He's been a scientist and e lead uh, and the lead of Solar Thermal Group in ARCI Hyderabad, and he has been a research scientist at IM, INM Leibniz Institute, Saarbrücken, Germany. Postdoctoral research at Friedrich. Alexander University at Erlangen, Nuremberg, which is in Germany again. He was also a DOD researcher, extended period, Institute, uh, Institute für Thermische uh, Verfahrenstik der Technischen uh, of University Klosthal, Klosthal Zeller Field, Germany. DOD researcher, uh, Institute of Solar Energy Research, Ostenstel, Hanover uh, in Germany. And uh, research associate in a project funded by the Netherlands organization, Environmental Technology, Lab, Central Leather, Leather Research Institute, Chennai, India. He is, of course, he's also uh, been a research fellow at the Department of Chemistry at Now University. Uh, Dr. Shakti Vail also is affiliated to many professional societies. He's a member of International Solar Energy Society, member of Royal Chemistry of uh, Royal Society of Chemistry, member of International Materials Research Society, member of Materials Research Society, India, member of Administrative Staff College of India, Hyderabad. Uh, of course, uh, Dr. Shakti Vail has been uh, honored and awarded in so many ways, a few of them. He's been, uh, he's a fellow of the Royal Society of Chemistry, FRSC Cambridge, UK. He's won the best researcher award for research work of anti-soiling coating technology in 2021. That is very recently, should be there. Member of the Royal Society of Chemistry, Cambridge, UK. He's won the Albert Nelson Marquis Lifetime Achievement Award. He's also won Mother Teresa Excellence Award offered by India International Friendship Society, New Delhi in 2017. Bharat Jyoti Award in 2015. Glory of India Gold Medal Institute offered by, I mean, uh, uh, Institute, International Institute of Success Awareness, New Delhi. Brain Korea Fellowship Award, Korea Science and Technology Korea. DARD Researcher Award, which is German Academic Exchange Service, Bonn, Germany. Best Paper Award at the Best Presentation of the International Conference on Energy Conversion Technologies in Berlin, Germany. Should a, a PhD student secured Best PhD Award at the second, you know, the, his PhD student has secured the Best PhD Award at the Second International Conference on Protective Coatings and Best Poster Award at the 10th Bengaluru in, uh, India Nano Conference held. Uh, so Dr. Shakti Vail has also been part of many uh, funded projects. And, receive, and has received major research grants in at least 10 of the projects. Well, 
I would wish to uh, read out everything, but for the lack of time, I'll just say that. And, and I think I can see uh, 2.9 crores, 2.96 crores, 55 lakhs, and then 56 lakhs. And then, you know, I think it has run to tens of course uh, of rupees, uh, I'm sure. So he has uh, subjected, uh, he has, he has uh, submitted major projects uh, in uh, smart net zero uh, energy, efficient buildings, common, you know, and, and solar thermal uh, power, et cetera, et cetera. And he has uh, uh, quite a few major projects in his, uh, in his uh, uh, you know, he's like, credited to. Uh, professional activities, Dr. Shaktivel is a member of uh, CSIR. He's also a member of the advisory committee of Carbon, Ox Carbon Dioxide Research and Green Technology Center, VIT Vellore. He's a member of advisory committee on advanced materials chemistry, member of advisory committee of many other you know, journals and uh, uh, advisory committees across the country and even abroad. So uh, he has uh, many PhD students have completed and many are undergoing, I mean, doing research under him as PhD students, senior research fellow, junior research fellow, and so on. Um, publications, Dr. Saktivel has, uh, you know, published 64 journal, pap 64 papers, you know, including journals and proceedings and has published three book chapters and he has filed 38 patents, okay, 15, in the 15 of them all on his own independent and 14 uh, other countries. I mean, he has, he's applied, I mean, total patent filed is 38. That includes patents filed in 14 different countries, four US, two you know, um, WO, I don't know what it is, three uh, European. Total patent granted 18 till now. Total citations, 9,500 plus. Well, uh, he's been an international speaker the national, at many of the, uh, many of the conferences. And uh, he's also participated in many management programs, uh, offer, uh, and he's been a part of the leadership program and, uh, you know, on many, uh, committees that uh, sit on solar energy and other kinds of uh, you know activities so sir i cannot say anything more that uh, uh, we do have a distinguished speaker and a performing personality today and uh, and who else than the head of the center for solar energy materials to talk on solar materials itself sir we are very very pleased to have you today i uh, request you to take over and uh, uh, you can continue as uh, uh, as you know this uh, is this is a session you know uh, from 9:15 to 11:15 basically that means you we have two hours up to 11:15 you can uh, uh, i mean maybe uh, maybe up to 10:45 if you can uh, you know talk it will be nice and leave the remaining half an hour for uh, the uh, for for question and answer sessions so I mean, elastic plus or minus is fine, whichever way. And if you find any uh, problem uh, in your bandwidth, you can also uh, switch off your video in case you don't need your video. I mean, we, we, we can hear you and you can come back on the video at the end. Well, you can, whether you, you keep the video on or not is your, uh, you know, it's your discretion. Just that if it, there's a bandwidth problem only, we have to do that. Otherwise, you, we can keep it on. So thank you very much. Please take over, sir. Very good morning to all of you. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Panish, for your nice introduction. And uh, it is a privilege uh, for me to present here about our uh, the, the technology, what we have uh, developed recently and uh, successfully transferred to many industries. Uh, for the society benefit. And uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, functional coating technologies. So how uh, it is useful for uh, both solar, thermal and uh, photovoltaic application. Is it audible for my uh, voice or uh, should I? Sir, it is uh, quite audible. Just a little, uh you know, um, uh, disturbance came and went for a second. So maybe if you can switch off your video, probably they're uh, probably. Uh, yes. They're moderate. One last thing I did not tell you, sir, uh, amongst uh, all the participants, we have uh, faculty, research fellows, students, and, uh, you know, of engineering colleges, me mechanical, material science engineering, and even electronics, physics, chemistry, 
uh, all uh, people there are from people all over India. Uh, uh, there, it's now around 72 people are there, but it will rise to 120, 130 easily in another five to 10 minutes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, before going to my, uh, the technical presentation, I would like to uh, introduce shortly about my institution as well as my center, so what we have achieved and what we are mainly focusing. And uh, so uh, many of you know that, can you, one minute, get some stuck up in the, my presentation slide. Yes, so many of you know that uh, about ARCA. So ARCA, its full expansion uh, is International Advanced Research Center for Powder Metallurgy and New Materials. So it is an autonomous R&D center working under uh, a DST government of India. So this is our main campus, uh, nearly 90, uh, 99 acre, around 100 acre it is a you know, uh, area. And uh, this is our main campus. And uh, the, main, the key focus or it's like the motto of this institute, our institute is to develop uh, and, uh, new materials and process and transfer the technology to industry to support our uh, 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 society mainly. And uh, so far it is that we have uh, uh, successfully transferred 41 technology to various industry and more than 200 technological solution provided to a different uh, type of industry. So this uh, institution uh, consists of 11 center of excellence. Uh, especially it is a you know, solar and nano uh, and also it is automotive energy. So this is the main uh, uh, center. They're uh, mainly focusing on nano-based materials for various energy application. And uh, solar is uh, one of the, it is a recently started center in our institution. It is, uh, you know, we have a very good, you know, state of the art facilities and uh, we have uh, a kind of it is a you know uh, all short of facility from characterization to uh, the process of scale of that material. So here you can see that it is the center, uh, the key research area. So the center mainly focusing on uh, three major areas. So solar thermal is a major part, and another one it is a solar photovoltaic. Apart from these main areas, solar thermal and uh, solar energy harvesting technology area. So we are also focusing functional materials and, and coating for various applications like uh, thermal storage and uh, uh, various functional. It is a you know, self-cleaning, it is a coating for a different application, including it is a PV as well as solar thermal. And these are some of the, our uh, you know, prototype what we developed and uh, demonstrated recently. And uh, this is a key achievement, what we, uh, so far we achieved. Uh, totally, we transferred four technology to four uh, different industries. And then uh, totally we have filed uh, around, it is, you know, 20, 18 patents. And out of 18, it's a nine were uh, granted. And then number of publication more than 150 and uh, the average impact factor more than it is a 4.5. The total it is a, you know, uh, more than 10 project running right now. And we have successfully completely four major projects around it is 7.66 crore value with the successful uh, development of technology and transfer number of patents. So that's what it is that we, we achieved recently. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, the center has, it is established uh, 
major you know, state of the art facility. This is one of the state of the art facility established in the country. First, CAGS solar cell for large area, it is in for CAGS uh, solar cell development. And uh, the facility has a capacity to develop CAGS cell on 13 to 30 sites, one square meter roughly. And uh, this is what it is. We recently it is demonstrated very successfully. Our my CAGS uh, team has successfully demonstrated uh, a cell with the efficiency of around 13 percentage on 10 into 10 size. It is a you know cell uh, on model size and with with uh, you know uh, mobile phone charge application and many other you know small device application. And apart from that, uh, we have also established a very uh, a good facility for making a large size perovskite solar cell. So we have uh, one kind of uh, TV perovskite, it is an active group working on this area and uh, mainly focusing on it as a you know, model uh, high efficiency perovskite solar cell. Uh, and it is a commercial model development on 10 into 10 size right now. And, uh, and we are also focusing on you know, different types of tandem uh, perovskite, silicon perovskite tandem solar cell. And recently this group has successfully demonstrated a prototype uh, model, uh, 50 into 50 uh, mm square and uh, the cell efficiency around it is 18.6 percent is maximum cell efficiency and the model efficiency they achieved it is more than eight eight percent each. This is a great achievement so far in the country as an indigenous it is a group activity. And apart from that, uh, we have also uh, made a very uh, unique uh, testing facility in the country for a national, uh, you know, this is, we can say that it is a national facility, it's very important potential facility uh, for evaluating different sort of uh, solar thermal components. Uh, especially it is a, you know, uh, receiver tube and uh, thermic fluid, mirror, uh, reflective mirror. And also it is a, you know, uh, different uh, functional coated glass cover tip for especially it is a, you know that all those things it is a, you know utilizing the solar power solar thermal power uh, generation this is a uh, because of that uniqueness recently this article it is a, you can see that uh, dst has published uh, article a new solar thermal component testing facility at hyderabad can help india's growing solar sector and uh, this article it is a highly it is a you know uh, publicized by different uh, scientific forums and as well as it is in many newspapers. And recently, our uh, new science and technology uh, minister, Department of Science and Technology Minister, uh, Sri Dr. Sitendra Singh uh, is a, a tutor and it is you know, highlighted this, uh, uh, the national important facility established in uh, first time in our country. And apart from this uh, state of the art facilities, we have also demonstrated various, you know, we have also established uh, many uh, facility from, you know, the lab scale development to large scale, maximum up to it is enough, uh, the semi industrial scale uh, uh, development of material as well as coatings. And this, you know, this center has excellent uh, facility uh, for all for characterization and uh, in a process development and also it is a you know, validation and uh, durability uh, of the material uh, testing uh, facility also we have established so today i am going to uh, uh, focus in my technical session so what is the importance uh, importance of solar energy why it is solar energy is very important for our country and second, it is a, you know, what is the current status of power generation? What is our capacity for uh, producing it is a, you know, uh, solar power and as, as well as other 
electric power from other sources and how we are utilizing so what is our utilization capacity and then uh, third i would like to talk you know uh, many of you know that it is uh, you know, what is the mechanism for it is a uh, you know solar con solar energy conversion technology and the next one it is the importance of solar power generation in india why it is india is a gifted country for uh, generating solar power and then after that it is a, you know i'm going to talk about uh, very particularly about it is a concentrated solar thermal thermal power technology and what are the important components and functional coatings it is you know uh, are being it is employed or are required more importantly and uh, next i'm going to talk about current status of receiver tip technology and then uh, how we uh, develop uh, coating uh, from coating to it is in a receiver tip and then how we successfully upscale and then it is the transfer the technology and uh, you know uh, with our uh, validation of our facility and uh, the finally i would like to talk about the easy to clean coating technology development for pv and other application so uh, how it is a, you know say cleaning is very important for our uh, you know pv power generation it's you know uh, plan and here you can uh, you know these are these are, uh, i inspired uh, uh this great person so many of you know that it is a, you know uh, can you any one of you it is a guest if you are a student can any one guess this uh, who is this person so he is a one who realized the importance of solar energy uh 100 years before and the speciality is he realized in his life period and he made a very highlight uh, you know uh, highlighted uh, things he made so here you can see that i would put my money on the sun and solar energy what a source of power can you guess any one of you who is that one so he is more involved in our you know day to day life you know without it is a his invention we could not it is a you know uh sir maybe i am correct uh, edison sir yes very good this is thanks sir thomas alva edison so the, the the important is he highlighted the importance of solar energy and it it will be a, it is a future energy and uh, you know to resolve all our environmental as well as our uh, energy requirement and uh, it's just you know you see this uh, his period it is a uh, 1847 to it is a uh, 1931 during this period he realized that, that is what it is uh, you know what i inspired about him uh, a scientist has it is a long you know must have you know have it is a longer vision then only it is a uh, we can realize the potential of it is a, you know uh, our research okay so apart from that it is a scientific you know uh, people the people are also it is a, you know the uh, uh, political uh, leaders also is very important to realize the importance of you know some research and uh, with their support it is a, you know it's a very key important to push this you know uh, field in a uh for for society benefit so here you can see, you know uh, you uh, i am not necessary it is you know uh, introduce him he is our former prime minister manmohan singh he realized and he made a very nice uh, you know sentence here you can see that it is the sun occupies the center stage as it should being literally the original source of all energy So when he made this uh, you know uh, after announcing this national mission action plan on climate change now you are it is a, you know when you are it is a, you know we all are feeling that it is so what is the impact of it is a, you know the global warming okay here and there if you go and see in the you know advanced country it is a canada and uh, us now they are facing it is a, although it is a, you know cold countries now they are facing it is a you know very drastic it is a heat 
you know, uh, uh, summer. And many people, it's killed by these heat waves in Canada. And also, it is, a, you know, uh, in the U.S. facing a lot of it is environment, you know, the great, uh, you know, environmental uh, problem, especially it is, a, you know, there's a, a wildfire in California state. Where it is a temperature, it is a very unusual temperature. You see that it is a, in a cold country, it is facing, it is very unusual uh, climate change. It is a temperature rising, any, uh, rising like anything. And uh, the tropical country like us, we may feel it is a, in the future, it is a very high cold in our country. So this is what will happen. It is a, the global warming. It is a, you know, is a major role, uh, you know, to turbulate our you know environment so and he is a one it is not only realized and he's made action so here you can see that it is a he's a one it is a you know made uh, announced national mission on uh, january uh, 11 2010 and he in first it is a, he started is a many uh, construction pro project and he first it is around it is 800 crores allotted 800 crores in the renewable energy sector that time. It's a huge money. And uh, you can see that it is a, you know, what are the objective was uh, earlier, uh, our solar mission. So the objective was to develop uh, 20,000 megawatt of solar power by 2022. That is what is a great, it is a, you know, the huge objective, okay. And then you can see the 20 million square meter solar thermal collector area by 2022. Okay. That time you can see here the ramp up of solar capacity as envisaged by our solar mission. Here you can see. So when uh, solar mission was announced, you can hear in the bottom, this is so 2010. And uh, you see our capacity was very less than 50 megawatt, it is a power capacity. And then reaching it is a, by 2022, around it is a 20,000 megawatt is a very unusual objective. So it is, it is like it is a mount in a Himalaya like it is objective. And then it is at that time we were in, a, uh, we were standing in the bottom of the hill. You see, this is a very little, it is a, in a capacity we had earlier. And very amazingly, I was, I, I, I went many uh, institute and colleges and gave uh, presentation from 2012 language. And this is one of my students who joined 2010. He uh, made a slide. Uh, this, you know, he took from some, you know, in, uh, the publication and he showed that it is so this is what it is a you know happen i i used to say that it is a you know how come it is a we will reach uh, this much of it is a you know major objectives so it is very and you know very unimaginable it is a you know things and we are it is a very uh you know basic level and uh we don't know unfortunately it is in 19 uh uh, 75 this pv technology the solar silicon solar uh, you know uh, after invention of it is a you know pv technology the silicon solar cell and uh, we are the country who started first the renewable energy department first in 1975 and uh, we are the first country who started it is a you know first ministry a separate ministry for non renewable energy new renewable energy uh, ministry so you see just imagine it is you know uh, we, we were it is a, you know many countries that time it is a, they didn't uh, do much action in this but unfortunately it is a, you know we don't have it is a, you know uh, enough you know technology and now it is a many other it is a, you know uh, western countries they are far ahead and now, now we realize, now we raise in the whole world, not only as it is, in the whole world, it is a realize the importance of it as a solar uh, power generation, you know, technology. And you can see that it is our uh, achievement. You see, 2020, right? 
Now we reached, it is around 35 gigawatt. That means it is a 35,000 megawatt of solar power, uh, you know, capacity, solar power plant we uh, established. And uh, now uh, with the support of it is our present uh, Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji. And now we reached, you see that it is a, you know, and now we are, you know, uh, the, the present government, it's a put the solar mission to reach, it is a hundred megawatt, hundred gigawatt, sorry, hundred gigawatt, around it is a one lakh megawatt by 2022. They upscaled. You see, this is, it is a, when a child, it is in a strolling, and then it is a, you know, the parents, it's moving, it is a, you know, uh, the object, it is a, you know, uh, more and more, it is a, you know, where it is a, you know, uh, pushing the children to, it is a reach that it is object. Okay. So this is what it is a, you know, our, uh, so this is very, uh, it is a, you know, it's a good, very great evidence for teamwork. Okay. So it is all teamwork coming from all sort of people, uh, from scientific field, and then it is a management field and the industry. And also it is a you know, good support from government. So this is a good evidence for that reason. It is a, we reached the very impressive, it is the objective of, right? It is, you know, scale 35 gigawatt right now. And then it is a now by 2020, we plan to reach it is 100. I hope it is, you know, uh, until, uh, you know, if uh, this COVID situation is not coming, so by this time it is we would reach that uh, you know 100 gigawatt capacity. Here you can see that it is a what is our total you know power generation capacity, and uh, now you can see that it is a you know we are uh, having it is a 363 around. Now it is a may we may it is a you know this value it is maybe it is a little higher. It is around 400 gigawatt. And uh, most of the energy, most of the it is the electrical energy we are generating by all fossil fuels. Okay, as you remember that it is a, you know the fossil fuel it is a, you know uh, the capacity available availability it is a, you know depleting day by, in a year in a day by day. Okay, and our uh, you know modernization due to our modernization and our uh, requirement and uh, due to fast globalization. So for that reason, it is a, you know, our requirement is, you know, moving it is higher, more and more, you know, required. we required it is a, you know, around, uh, in globally, it is a, you know, now around 15, you know, uh, a terawatt, it is a, you know, power generation required for all over the world. And future it is after it is a 2050, we expect it is a, you know, double the, uh, requirement 30 and terawatt it is a you know power requirement for our country so how we are generating so we are generating all the power it is a you know from the major it is a three major it is a you know you can see that it is in the pie chart so the coal and gas and oil these are the major it is a you know fossil uh, fuel we are utilizing how we are generating all of our power. It is a by burning of all the, you know, these three major sources. So this is this is what the reason that uh, you know uh, the global warming. So we are facing it as a, you know more global warming uh, and uh, major threat from this uh, viewpoint. So uh, renewable energy. What is our capacity? You can see that renewable energy. So some 2010, we have around less than 1% capacity. Now you can see that it is a, you know, the renewable energy, it is a 82%, especially it is a, you know, uh, the wind, it is a contributing a 10% and solar right is a great achievement, 9%. So that is what it is our, uh, the power generation capacity. So why uh, India is a very gifted country? So it's a uh, God gifted India. So we are right now, India is a tropical country. And uh, these are the, you know, uh, the positive attributes, uh, the solar energy, how we, you know, so the solar energy 
uh, harvesting technology is more suitable our for our country so the main the the main thing is the reason the most abundant source so just imagine it is we are getting it is around 250 to 300 days very clear sunny weather okay the average it is a uh, you know power uh, you know you know uh, 4.5 to you know 6.6 maximum kilowatt hour per square meter that is well suitable it is so 5 to 7 kilowatt hour per meter square per day and uh, nearly it is a 5000 trillion kilowatt hour radiation heating on our indian land you just imagine if you can take if you can take uh, tap around 5 percentage so you we could uh, resolve all our energy requirement that is what it is you know the potential or the potential uh, solar harvesting technology has a lot of potential and uh, the third one it is uh, you know as many of you know that it is a good environment you know global warming case like it is co2 and very safe and economic because uh, economic means we no need any any raw material sources so sunlight is a god's gifted source is our main raw material so that's what coming to solar energy conversion technology so here you can see that it is a, you know uh, there are three you know solar energy conversion technology so i didn't mention uh, you know one more okay it's photo chemical conversion also is one of the photo catalysis is one of the also uh, solar energy conversion technology solar energy conversion technology so many of you know that uh, there are three important uh, solar energy conversion technology so among three that i don't want to speak about photochemical uh, uh, kind of synthesis so photocatalysis is also one of, one of the it is you know uh, solar energy conversion technology but here today i'm going to talk about one is solar thermal and photovoltaic many of you know that it is a you know uh, uh, photovoltaic uh, it's a a single step it is a solar energy conversion technology because photon energy convert into electrical electrical energy by using a semiconducting material whereas in the case of it is solar thermal it is a multi 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 step it is a conversion technology so first it is a photon energy converted to photon energy that is uh, you know heat energy after that it is a mechanical and then it is a finally it is a you know electrical energy so compared to that it is efficiency wise so compared to solar uh, photovoltaic solar thermal is much more task much more you uh, know uh, efficiency because in the practically it is you know uh, we could achieve 40 percentage efficiency if the plant it is running at it is a clear sunny day so we could and you know the efficiency of the you know uh, the plant we could achieve it is a 40 percentage from photon energy to the final electrical energy but with a uh, you know and it has a high possibility to store the thermal energy by simple the storing system by using of molten molten salt or otherwise it is a pcm based materials so that is a you know it has it is very whereas in the case of photovoltaic uh, back you know we have to use battery and uh, one day the battery life around it is a uh, two to three years and it is you know uh, for when compared to battery the storage for electrical energy and this one it is thermal energy we could store uh, as much as heat we can it is a generate in the daytime and also we can store it in the form of it is you know heat by using of molten salt and uh, we could run the plant it is in the rest of the time so uh, after sundown so that is what it is you know that solar thermal has uh, a great potential and uh, here you can see that it is a, you know in principle uh, it works very similar to our conventional solar you kind know, of thermal power plant so uh, so you can see that it is a potentiality of this uh, uh, solar thermal and there is a you know uh, Uh, european solar thermal electricity association they made a clear it is a highlight if we use 4% of uh, you know uh, sakara desert with the help of 
parabolic i think it is a, this is a one it is a parabolic uh, concentrated solar thermal power plant with this you know uh, only one uh, coming to the you know uh, the working principle so it is very similar as our uh, in a conventional one only one uh, the major difference is in the conventional it is a thermal plant we use uh, fossil it is a, you know coal oil or gas you know to generate superheated steam and to for running the uh, you know uh, turbine so whereas in this case so we can you know use solar energy with the help of it is you know this is we call it is a parabolic collector and uh, with the help of this parabolic collector we can generate we can convert uh, solar energy to thermal energy and then we can it is a generate it superheated steam that is a only one difference the rest of that it is a, you know of, you know so this right side one it is a entirely it is a very similar to our conventional one the potential uh, uh, capacity of this uh, csp uh, mentioned by it is the you know, european solar thermal electricity association so they made a very clear statement if we can use 4 percentage of sagara desert so many of you know that where uh, where it is so it is located in north of you know north uh, north africa continent the total capacity of the total area of you know, uh, sagara desert around 96 lakhs square kilometer so the total area so just imagine it is if we can use 4 percentage of sagara desert with the help of this technology we could generate power for our whole world so that is what it is you know this solar thermal has very high you know capacity high potential for generating our power from so from sunlight so this is what it is you know the highlight of this one so just imagine it is a sun of 4 lakhs it actually it is 96 lakhs 4 percentage in the 96 lakhs uh, square kilometer just around it is a 4 lakhs square kilometer so we required and uh, it is just equivalent to uh, two times of star desert area you know you all of you know you know all so uh, our star desert is you know Uh, in rajasthan state so the total uh, area is 2 lakh square kilometer just imagine it is a, you know but only two times of uh, you know uh, tar desert area required for generator for whole world just imagine it is how much and you know area we required for india just around it is a 30 40% age of it is a, you know area we need to generate for our indian uh, for our country so here you can see whether this technology it is a well proven or well established yes it is well proven technology and uh, 1989 around uh, it was demonstrated in california most of this so this is the first it is a, you know the left side in the top corner you can see that uh so this plant located in uh, mosal uh desert in us california state and it started with it is a 350 megawatt power capacity so now it is established around 3000 megawatt capacity and uh, when the time solar mission was announced so our you know all over the world around it is a 10 to 20 plants now almost it is 150 to 100 plants well established in all over uh, all over the world and it is well proven there and in india it is a, you know we, we didn't have any single plant earlier now around uh, more than 12 plants established more than it is a 500 megawatt as far as it is a you know uh, in a with the comparison of it is a pv conversion technology this uh, technology solar thermal it is a little uh, behind compared to pv so the reason behind okay we don't have uh, any indigenous component development facility in india we don't have any technology you know commercial available technology and no production capacity in india so all the thermal component 
we need to it is a import from outside so that is a major hurdle for this technology and another reason is you know we cannot it is a established such kind of plant in all over india so we can where we can get it is a more dni so many of you know that it is a you know little bit about it is a dni or dni so dni means direct normal irradiation so that means okay it is a you know the light uh, sun light you know whatever light it is a coming without scattering we used to call it direct normal irradiance so global means both dni direct normal irradiance as well as a scattering light so that means it is a global normal irradiance so that you know any pv plant can run with you know good gni whereas in the case of it is the you know uh, solar thermal power plant we required it's a high dni area so where we can get high dni so where we we have so it mainly we can get in a desert area so in rajasthan or the ladakh area it is a very suitable for establishing such kind of plant so apart from power uh, generation and this technology is very useful for you know industrial process heat application just imagine that it is whatever energy we are generating from all sources out of it is a you know 100% it is 40% of energy you know utilized by our industry only so out of 40% industrial energy again it converts into okay it is a heat energy it is a you know it's again it is a waste of time it is a, instead of using it is a, you know, again like you know instead of using electric power power to uh, heating the it is a, you know uh, liquid so we could directly use it as a thermal energy by using of this technology so that is what advantage so india has it's a very potential because 74 percentage of heat energy in you know, electrical energy being used as it's a heat energy so that's what it is a, you know uh this technology is well suitable for uh industrial process heat application solar cooling cooking and solar water heater and the desalinity such kind of plant it is this is very useful and uh, coming to important functional coating and properties so uh, you should know that it is a, you know uh, uh, the important coatings so we need for tracking or are absorbing it is a you know whole radiation we need it is a you know a kind of it is a high selective absorber coating so the coating should absorb radiation from 300 nanometer to 2500 nanometer that means entire solar radiation in solar radiation we the spectrum it is here you can see the down the blue uh, uh, line so you can see that it is a you know starting from 300 to 3300 you know range we are getting okay so the coating should uh, you know uh, absorb radiation from 300 to 2500 nanometer around 90 to 95% so that is you know key requirement for this type of it is a coating requirement for this application so and our apart from that so uh, the coating should show also it is a dual functionality so what means it is why it is required it is a dual functionality because after converting into heat energy after converting from solar energy to heat energy so the heat energy should not escape from the receiver tip here you can see that uh, uh, in the complete in a parabolic trough and uh, which comprise of it is a you know parabolic mirror which we call it it is a concentrator so it uh, it focus towards this receiver tube so the receiver tube it is a you know comprise of you know uh, the metal tube as well as you know uh, the glass cover tube so the metal tube has contain it is a you know this high selective so the over on the metal tube generally we need it is a high selective absorber coating so this is a blue line you can see that uh, absorber coating and over on the glass you know it's vacuum sealed uh, tube so that outside jacket it is a you know 
made up of it is a glass cover so it has it is a you know anti reflective type you know coating so we can enhance the anti you know the transmission of uh, you know glass by using of anti reflective coating so these two coatings is very very important and uh, after it is a so after converting into uh, the sunlight to it is a heat energy the coating should protect the heat inside the tube for that reason it is a this coating should has you know dual functionality so uh, the coating it is high selective means it should absorb 300 to 2500 at the same time it should protect radiation from 200 2.5 at 25 to you know 2.2500 uh, nanometer to 25000 nanometer that means if you calculate in a micron it is you know 2.5 micron to 25 micron so that heat radiation should protect so that is very important for you know uh, this such type of coating so coming to our uh, technology so we are concentrating it arc is mainly focusing on it is a two type of uh, you know receiver coating when it is suitable for low to medium temperature solar thermal application so with this one it is a, we can use for it is a industrial process heat application whereas in the you know, so in another type medium to that the temperature range low to uh, medium means it is a 100 to it is a 250 nanometer uh, Uh, 250 degrees centigrade whereas in the medium to high temperature range we can uh, operate from 350 to 500 degrees centigrade so that is was high temperature industrial process heat uh, application as well as power plant application we need a high temperature uh, uh, stable absorber coating the current status of receiver tube technology so as i mentioned very clearly in the beginning so so far we don't have any commercial coating or commercial receiver tube manufacturing by indian uh, manufacturers so no one it is no nothing no uh, there is a no availability in, in india so all the component it is the, you know uh, mainly it is a, you know this receiver tube it is a we importing from abroad and uh, this coating all all the receiver tube most of the receiver tube it is are being developed by pvd process so pvd as you know that pvd is a very expensive process physical vapor deposition is a very expensive process and we need coating on 2 to 4 meter it is a you know one stretch without any you know uh, joint so we need coating on 2 to 4 meter for such kind of commercial application so making coating by pvd process uh, by pv you know uh, coat on at the long size 2 meter to 4 meter size tube is a very expensive so almost it is a, you know the industry should invest around 20 crores for uh, uh, for investment so it is very very challenging for indian industry and uh, there is one some coating it is available that is saying uh, the e e p f that institute it is from switzerland they have first demonstrated 2 meter length receiver tube by salgel process cost effective process so apart from that no other it is a coating available from uh, cost effective process and uh, this is the first one it is a erc in our technology we have successfully developed very cost effective uh, process by using combination of chemical oxidation salt gel as well as it is a nano composite process here you can see that it is a you know the potential in you know, a key feature of our uh, technology the our technique it is very very uh, economic very easy to scale up so any industry so any technology if we can say viable potential means the technology should have high scalability so that is very important for commercialization and uh, this technova technology it has its high you know scalability uh, high scalability and very economic that's what it is in the advantage of our technology 
here you can see that the the layer it is what in order to get maximum it is a you know 90 above optical properties optical absorptance so we need to make it as a you know multiple layer and uh, our uh, coating you know uh, the structure here you can say that it is you know here you can see uh, it is first base layer and after that it is a further optical enhancement we use the sol gel layer it's a kind of it is a composite zirconia and nano composite layer and then third one it is another anti reflective layer silica nanoparticle based layer or magnesium fluoride layer here you can uh, see that uh, very simple technology. So many of you know that it is a you know, metal. So the stainless steel, uh, uh, it comprises of, it is a all, uh, you know, uh, three, four metal composition. So iron is a major portion and chromium, nickel and manganese. So what we are doing with the using of it is a chemical, you know, special chemical mixture with the, you know, in, in a, uh, Particular, it's a process temperature. We oxidize the metal, metal forming very tiny layer over on the stainless steel, which gives it is you know, optical absorptance around 90 percent And second layer we developed from uh, sol gel process, zirconia silica composite, and then we are putting over on there. It is a you know uh, absorber layer, base absorber layer by using of it is a you know dip coater, what you are seeing at the right side. So we have, it as a very good, you know, dip coater facility. We can coat uh, sample from it as a, you know, uh, 10 centimeter to one meter length. And now we, uh, we are going to upscale uh, maximum up to two meters. And uh, and the third layer, anti-reflective layer, it is, a, you know, over on that, it is, a, you know, that uh, second, uh, layer we used to keep it as a third layer to push that it is optical property maximum up to 94 to 95 percentage here you can see right side so the arc receiver tip how comparable with the commercial one and this is a one it is a you know uh, all uh, right now it is in almaco developing uh, pvd based coating and our coating property is almost equivalent to commercial one and the recently this high I mean that's China made, they are also it's a developing coating that is say a PVD based coating. So the property is almost equivalent to commercial one. So here you can see that it is a you know that the first single layer, the thickness, what we measure it is around 160. Usually it is if you want to get more optical properties from 300 to 2500 in a wider range. So we need to go, it is a multi-layer. Most of the, it is a PVD type of coating. They used to put it as a six layers, a type of different, it is a you know, metal oxide and metal type coating to make it as a you know, more, uh, to get more optical absorptance. Whereas in our case, it is a, you know, all our three layer total thickness around 350 nanometer. So with the, you know, compact thickness, we could get it as a less thermal loss property. I will show that is the sum of that, uh, you know, thermal loss property uh, when we uh, completed our uh, validation process. So this is what it is upscaled. I already mentioned that it is any technology we can say potential, viable, and commercial, you know, economic everything, it should be scalable. Very easily scalable, this technology. So you can see that it is a, we have successfully scaled up all the coatings on by simple it is a mechanical mixing and then it is a you know uh, very simple it is a chemical oxidation and dip coating process and this we will develop multiple numbers of receiver tips and we uh, join together and uh, by uh, by tick and laser welding and then after that we have developed a uh, two meter prototype receiver tip for field validation until unless if you are not validating uh, the product you know and real field conditions so no one it is appreciate or no one interest to take the technology so for that reason it is a, you know prototype type development and validation is very important and this is one uh, video you could see that 
how we are making uh, you know so this is a way uh, we are uh, developing chemical uh, receiver tube by simple chemical oxidation and uh, salt gel process and here you can see that this statistic facility we recently established and uh, the article we you know recently published in tst website and highlighted many scientific uh, forum and uh, this is what it is you know why i may i meant uh, i mentioned in my in my earlier uh, time so uh, this is a unique facility so it's a two uh, parabolic rope and it is a kind of a rope it is kind of it is a closed rope uh, closed loop uh, thermic based system so one row we can keep commercial standard one another row we can keep it is our indigenous one we can parallelly compare the performance of you know our indigenous uh, tube with comparison of commercial standard then we could understand there it is you know so the standard of our uh, coating technology and uh, this here uh, I'll run the video how it is works the concentrated mirror focusing the light towards the the focal point receiver tube so this what i mentioned that thermic fluid based system we use a high temperature thermic fluid for carrying out all the heat and this is a one pyranometer for measuring that uh, uh, gni and uh, pyrono heliometer for measuring D, uh, dna and then pyranometer it is a gn so we simultaneously you know measuring monitoring that it is the how much radiation we are getting from morning to till evening while operating the rough for calculating the the real optical efficiency so these are the two major uh, property we Uh, i would like to uh, professor hi uh, yes sir yes 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 sir yes, yes. yes dr sakivel sir you. yes so uh, this is a validation and in order to understand the you know uh, receiver tube performance so we are testing both heat gain and heat loss heat gain how much heat it is we are generating uh, by using up actual sunlight radiation so that is heat gain so one way of it is in understanding the performance of receiver tube another one how much heat loss coming out from uh, receiver tube so heat gain means we need it is a more heat gain at the same time this receiver should Uh, release less heat so then we can say that 
we you know this is high performance receiver team so here if we compare it as a you know as i mentioned that is a commercial as well as it is our indigenous one at the same time so you can see that average heat gain so our receiver team the optical prop 94 to 95 so for that reason it is a you know our property is a little bit is closer very close it is a very uh, less than it is one percentage it is a you know different when compared with commercial receiver tube and commercial has it is a you know for 95 more than 95 percentage of subtenants so whereas in the case of you know for heat loss property so we are we can also study heat loss property of the actual receiver by heating that it is a you know thermic fluid from different process temperature 100 to 200 degree centigrade and you can call we can calculate that heat loss by using up q is equal to equal to delta t cp and you know multiply with mass so we could easily get it is a you know how much it is a in a heat loss we observed in our tip and commercial tip when compared it is a heat loss service is very uh, low compared to commercial one that is due to because of it is a less thickness of it is a you know layer and uh, the high stability in the open atmospheric condition whereas in the case of it is a you know the commercial one develop uh, you know that's a pvd based receiver tip so after some times it uh, start to oxidize so if metal or metal layer start to oxidize so the film thickness will go higher so that will kill that it is a, that will cause it is a high heat loss property so in our case it is a you know this uh, receiver tip is a very stable at open atmospheric condition that is the advantage of our technology and uh, after successful completion of it is a validation so we have successfully transferred you know one industry so that uh, green era energy india private limited and uh, also we have demonstrated we have supplied receiver tip we have successfully developed multi number of tips and supplied to various industry for validation as well as it is a you know for uh, for different application and here you can see that it is a you know successfully this technology uh, has been deployed in the field in the actual field so the location is beam it is your uh, you know karnataka state and you can see that it is a you know um, this receive our receiver tip successfully joined by uh, welding and after that they keep it in the you know parabolic trough and now this facility this is solar cooking facility this is a trust made so they are it is a you know making uh, 2000 meals per day with the support of this uh, solar thermal cooking facility so our tip it is successfully is you know uh, deploy the uh, refilled application so coming to uh, second uh, technology is a medium to high temperature uh, receiver tip technology for high temperature uh, industrial process heat and uh, power plant application so this technology is very unique and the material what we have developed by very unique way so uh, spinal oxide so we have developed a novel spinal oxide which has it is a high pressure stable to stable state and uh, we uh, this type of it is a you know uh, nano uh, uh, structure based spinal oxide type of coating we developed for high temperature application and recently we have here you can see that it is a you know what is the thermal stability of this coating so after it is a long duration 250 hours there is most of the it is a plant it is a parabolic plant it is in a maximum operating temperature around 400 degree centigrade so for that reason this coating we have tested at 500 degree centigrade degree centigrade for longer duration and you can see that there is a no loss in optical properties that is a you know great advantage of you know this coating it can be operated at open atmospheric condition at the same time you can see that it is a it has it is a wide angle selectivity so the coating it is a capable to absorb 
get a maximum sunlight at all, at all angles, incident angles. So as you know that it is a, when sun moves from morning to it is the evening, it moves, it is a one direction to other direction. So while moving, the angle also will change. So in order to make it, it is a more efficient uh, for the plant uh, efficiency. So if you can use such type of coating, so you can get it as a maximum efficiency at maximum you know, duration. So that is what it is at the advantage of this coating. And we have successfully developed multi number of tubes. And uh, this is one PhD work. And my student, it has successfully completed recently all the, you know, uh, scale up work and we are going to it is validated here you can see that it is a comparison of its our technology this has high optical properties more than 95 percent 97 percentage optical absorptance and uh, emittance 0.14 and a little bit higher when compared to it is a you know uh, the commercial tube short uh, you know the company who is making it is a you know receiver tube for power plant application germany so their tube around it is 95 and 0.1 uh, uh, emissivity at 400 degrees centigrade. So ours is very you know, comparable with the commercial receiver tube. Now you can see that it is, a, you know, I already mentioned. So any technology, we can say that potential and viable technology. So the technology has a good scalability. So then only it is a, we could say that it is a, you know, scalable and commercial viable technology. Here it is our technology is very scalable and uh, you can see that it is a multi number of tube. This is a PhD student and he successfully developed. And then uh, here you can see that it is in a first layer and second, you know, after anti-reflective layer, the right side, coated receiver tube and, uh, after that, we have validated this receiver tube by using of it as the you know, hand girl, you know, absorb, uh, absorptance meter as well as emission meter. And you can see that it is all our property. It is a year 96 property and throughout the, it is a you know, uh, tube. And then it is a emis emittance around it is a 0.13 to 0.16. And uh, here you can see that we recently uh, developed two meter receiver tip and this is a commercial receiver tip we obtained from uh, China. And now we are going to validate uh, this receiver tip for commercial applications. Coming to, uh, apart from uh, receiver tip technology, now I'm going to uh, present about our easy to clean coating. This is one of the, it is the most important uh, a technology required, uh, you know, uh, very high demand for you know PV industry. So as you know that it is a India has established around it is a 30 to 30 to gigawatt uh, PV power capacity, and this is one of the plant. It is a largest plant established in Kamudi, Tamil Nadu. So you see that it is a you know this plant per day they are using two two lakhs liter of water for cleaning the panel just imagine it. so what is the challenge it is a you know uh, you know pv uh, industry is facing especially it's a pv power plant these are the more you know the four challenges so uh, there is a reflection losses from it is a you know glass and the second one it is a glass corrosion due to uh, the drastic environment if you, if you put a plant in it is a you know uh, in a seashore area you will get it is a you know more corrosion environment and another one effect it is a temperature effect and fourth one it is a soiling of uh, glass this is a major one soiling loss here you can see that what are the impacts uh, you know due to soiling loss here you can see the 30 percentage of loss in transmission was noticed over a period of one month, if you just leave your you know, PV plant outside, so within a month, it is a, you know, you can get it as a 30 percentage loss in glass transmission. So roughly it is a four gram per meter squared uh, dust will decrease the performance of it as a PV model around 40 percentage. 
so that end almost it is a you know it kill the plant efficiency so cleaning by means of manual so generally it is a, you know most of our plant it is a, you know uh, maintaining by manual cleaning and it is a, you know that is also quite challenging you continuously if you uh, clean by it is a you know mechanical scrubber by unskilled or skilled person it is a you know easily they will scratch the you know glass surface once if you crack scratch the glass surface it will lose the you know transmission that is also it is a one of the negative with a major challenge and maintaining the it is a glass with the high transmission so people are using now it is a you know uh, the automatic in you know, a robotic cleaning but it is for india it is a you know very quite expensive so, and also you have to make it as a rail for it is a uh, for you know you have to invest more and each row you have to make it as a rail for it is a moving the robotic cleaning uh, machine so in order to avoid that so now people use it as a you know the special coating so now it is a you know if we can make it it is a you know a self cleaning coating or ec2 or anti soiling coating it is a very useful for such kind of application so there is two type of anti soiling coating people already tried so one it is a super hydrophobic another one it is a super hydrophilic so super hydrophobic it uh, it function it works uh, you know when you uh, when the coating it is a, you know on the pv model so when you pour just for it is a cleaning so the water will roll like a ball and with the, it is a you know, uh, high density it will take away all the dust and then whereas in the case of it is a super hydrophilic so made made for it is a you know, tao to based coating or any porous type of coating but water moves like a film so here you can see down it is a you know right side uh, down picture so water move like a you know film it takes away it is a you know very lit, tiny dust or tiny dirt and but it won't uh, help to remove it is a micron size particle so i think it is a you know you know in from our it is experience and it is super hydrophobic well suited for such application so here you can see the surface so how it is look like super hydrophobic coated pv panel super hydrophilic as well as uncoated panel and this is a technology it is a we have developed with the support of you know ntpc ntpc it is a you know given it is a you know one joint technology development project around 60 lakhs and we have successfully developed for uh, you know uh, pv application so Uh, if you want to make a, a dust repellent coating or anti soiling coating so it uh, you are providing it is a one additional functionality that that means it is a you know dust repellent or dust re reduction at the same time the pv industry people expect this coating should not reduce any single percentage of it is a transmission ultimately it is a no power reduction so for that for that reason ntpc claimed that asked us to uh, you know make high transparent coating without losing of any transmission and also it is a no power loss so that is a quite challenging making this coating by uh, you know uh, by using ambient condition so because if you want to establish coating on uh, you know the, on the in the in the field itself so the coating it is a, you know should cure it at ambient condition so for that reason it is a, you know so uh, we have uh, you know keep it that mind it is a, for developing such type of coating with using of it is a, you know special nano structure material and uh, with a functionalized uh, molecule so we have successfully developed very high transparent uh, easy to clean coating for such application and this coating it is a you know uh, you know validated in a different plant site you, here you can see that it is a ntpc ground mounted plant we have coated uh, in the field immediately it is a you know it uh, you know coating get cured and after that it is a you know we study the performance 
far it is a two months you can see that it is a 7.5 percentage power enhancement with using of such type of coating technology and also this coating uh, technology uh, you know be validated uh, in the rooftop plant here you can see that it is a you know this building it is located in uh, hyderabad it it is a com commercial complex the plant it's a 500 you know kilowatt it is a plant established over on the rooftop and here you can see that uh, our people it is a, you know successfully demonstrated this coating and after two months four months they have validated with comparing of it is a, you know 150 uncoated panels and 72 panels we have coated and uh, we observed very high and you know good enhancement and then we use it as a you know easy to clean coated panel. So it's showing it is a better performance compared to uncoated panel. And uh, uh, here you can some you know, see some uh, videos, how we are, it is a you know, coating very simple way. You can uh, coat by spray and wipe coating technique. You can see that. So the, the major challenge is when you are The major challenge is when you are heat, when you are uh, uh, spraying with uh, humidity, it will easily it is a you know hydro uh, precipitate and it makes it is a you know white uh, spot on the PV panel. So until unless if you are not controlling that it is a soil composition and uh, it leads it is a you know it reduce drastically you know it reduce transmission very drastically by making of it as a white spot. So that, you know, soil composition, it is a very critical parameter to maintain it as a, you know, controlled hydroxylation or with avoiding it as a precipitation. So that is a very important, uh, you know, uh, step we required. Here it is, a, you know, for, uh, you know, demonstration. So you can see that it is, a, you know, uh, the student is spreading, it is, a, you know, mic a very fine dust over on the panel and uh, you can see that now it is after it is a pouring water so how it is a dust very easily it is a you know there is a no hurdle to it is a remove uh, you know dust with putting up it is a you know minimum water so uh, by using of such you know used to clean coating uh, technology you can reduce manpower drastically 50% of manpower by using of it, you know, by cleaning process. And also it is a, you know, water consumption. 50% of water consumption we can reduce. So that will save, it is enough, you know, because PV plant, it is spending more money for cleaning and maintaining of this plant. So apart from it is a, you know, the cleaned one. So you can, here you can see that it is an uncoated panel. Okay. So it uh, you know because uncoated panel it is you know, uh, it is very difficult to, it is you know remove that this is what it is you can see that Professor Shaktivel I'm sorry to interrupt you yes I'll another five minutes I will finish uh, okay. yes so we need to have at least about ten minutes for interaction so if you can yes yes five you. minutes I will finish so we have time till eleven twenty five. Yes, I'm. I'm okay, right? I'm. I'm closer to it. So I'll, yes. mini, I'll finish up it is in two minutes. Yes, sir. yes, sir. fine. Sir. Thank you. Well, this is uh, apart from other application. So the same coating we established coating on it is a you know automobile wind uh, here. Uh, So, so after successful validations, we have uh, transferred this technology to two main to the major industry. You can see that it is a NTPC, and then uh, Marichin, the second uh, industry, who we have taken it as a, this technology recently, and Alox now, and uh, we have successfully demonstrated it's a large scale synthesis of soil at our place, and also. 
demonstrated coating on PV model. Here, this is a product you can get it from market. Next, uh, this company will launch this product. Uh, I think it is a, you know, another uh, in next few months, you can get this product. And uh, this company successfully demonstrated their coating at a very highly, uh, you know, polluted area. This is uh, this place in uh, Bombay, the mid mid middle of the city. So here you can see that it is a coated panel. It is a, how they are coating. And you can see that it is a hydrophobic property at uh, on larger size. And then uh, we have some of the activity. It is, you know, we are collaborating with many industry, architectural application, as well as it is a, you know, defense application. And then demonstration for automobile application. So we have successfully completed. And finally, I thank. And so this is a, you know, I, I already mentioned that it's a, you know, any technology, if we can say viable, Potential, the technology should has should have it as a you know uh, high scalability, and uh, apart from that, we need it is a great support from great people. So, I would like to thank my former directors, uh, Dr. Sundararajan and uh, Dr. Padmanabham. Now he is no more uh, due to pan you know COVID. He passed away recently and uh, I, in this moment it is I would like to thank him especially and uh, I would like also thank my uh, our uh, it is a you know, division head associate director and uh, I would finally I would like to thank all my uh, team members uh, for scoring and voting Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Dr. Shaktivel, I'm uh, really, yes. uh, uh, thank you very much for uh, being with us and sharing your time and, uh, you know, effort and your knowledge, etc. Yes, of course, uh, right now we will have a short question and answer session. As I said, we are our next session starting at 11.30 and uh, the next speaker will log in at 11.25 and therefore, we need to uh, uh, limit this. So, sir, uh, I would wish uh, there are not many questions on the chat box. So, maybe anyone wants to wants to ask questions, may please, uh, you know, ask orally. Please unmute yourself and go ahead and uh, talk to Dr. Shakti. Uh, sir, good morning, sir. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, sir, uh, I'm a PhD scholar, uh, so I'm now I'm uh, doing my PhD on solar. So we have, we have used copper tubes for the cooling purpose. Is there any other uh, suitable material uh, rather than rather than this uh, copper tube? Uh, can we use PCM material uh, for uh, cooling purpose? Yes. So, sir, cooling uh, purpose of uh, what? For what application? Sir, sir uh, for cooling the TV panel. Uh, yes, uh, yes. You uh, use uh, it as a PCM material. Uh, sir, uh, paraffin wax uh, and uh, honeybee wax. Uh, rather than that, uh, is there any other suitable material to use, sir? Yeah, you know, for. People are designed now, for example, they don't know, uh, say water circulation. Hello, sir. Water circulation, can uh, see that. Hello, any voice? Hello, sir. Hello. Ah, yes. So, uh, you know, very, uh, now, now people are using it as a water circulation. Okay. Water circulation or it is a, any, uh, the PCM type of paints would be advantage. Okay. Uh, sir. Instead of it is a PCM uh, material. Okay. So how you are, it is a, you know, uh, how you will coat on it is a two, one into two meter. 
very economical. That is a challenge. Okay, sir. Thank okay. you, sir. So, so now it is a PV panel. It is around eighty six thousand rupees. Okay. You can make okay. it. It is a you know any PCM based cooling process. Make it if we make it. It is a five percentage of the panel. People would uh, appreciate. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Anything? Yeah. Anybody else would like to speak to the uh, speaker? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Uh, suppose if you want to have this PV panel to domestic purpose like home, so like one megawatt, how much it may cost, sir? Any idea? One megawatt. Yeah. Uh, as per it is my knowledge, uh, you know, if uh, around a three to four crores for home purpose. You know, one megawatt. You asked, no? No, no. I don't know how much it required for home purpose. Like uh... how, how much? Yeah, okay, okay. Sorry for that. It is a you know actually for home. And we people are it is a going it is a you know one kilowatt to two kilowatt oh, based on the it is a requirement. Yes, sir. Okay, one kilowatt to two kilowatt power uh, you know PV power capacity, and uh, it depends on it is a one lakh to two lakh it is I think it is I don't know any much idea, okay. but but the requirement is around one to two kilowatt. Okay. So around two lakhs you can even uh, you can. Okay, if you many are you using this want, uh, what is that are there anybody is using this like uh, nowadays uh, they are talking about this yeah for millions of people they are using all so you are not aware that it is a, you know india many million of millions of people it is using you know that go to go to uh, you know you can check it okay sir so, okay. now now uh, whoever it is uh, making new building So yes, you know they prefer the younger generation prefer uh, such type of it is a you know power power work okay okay sir thank And you sir. there it is supplying to government also uh, for public uh, use use all this their stuff yes thank you sir for welcome. Yeah. Uh, anyone else? Any maybe one last question we can take. Uh, anyone would like to speak to Dr. Shakti Bhai? Uh, well, uh, Dr. Shakti Bhai, I think uh, we come to an end of this talk to the program. Uh, on behalf of uh, our institute, our department, and also from uh, the uh, <clears throat> on on behalf of AICT. i think we profusely thank you for uh, having accepted and uh, you know sharing i mean your time with us and your knowledge